Several weeks ago, during the new moon, the forecast was for clear skies with no clouds to be seen for at least several days. It seemed to me to be the perfect time to head out west to a dark sky area and to see if I could find myself a place to set up camp and set up my telescopes for some fun under the stars. So I loaded up my Toyota Hiace and I headed out. And I drove for about an hour and a half away from my home, heading out west, and found this location down a dirt road right off the interstate exit. I was excited, for at home I do astrophotography under Bortle 8 skies. At this dark site, I was hoping for Bortle 2 skies. And that would be a game changer for astrophotography. So the first thing here is my Los Mandy G11 uh, Celestron version. So it's a little, got, it's got a little bit different kind of a base than the traditional G11 base, but it is a G11 nonetheless. And I've got my RC6 scope sitting on it with my ASI 071 uh, MC. Pro camera and I've got my pocket bo pocket power boxed advanced right here and of course I got my melee 2 little PC right there and I'm running Gemini 2 uh, I actually part of the level 6 beta group so I've actually I'm running level 6 and it seems to be running pretty good. And then over here, I've got my EQ6R Pro with my AstroTech 80, um, AT80, mm, EDT. Yeah, there we go. As soon as my mind starts working here, it'll be just fine. And I've got a fuel flattener on here, so I'm running this thing at 480. And I've got my uh, ZWO ASI 2600mm Pro. And I've got my seven position filter wheel with my new um, three nanometer um, narrow band filters and my new Antalia LRGB. In fact, the whole filter set now is Antalia. Um, and then, of course, I've got my um, my rotator here, my Falcon rotator. And I forgot my light spreader. <laughs> so hopefully, we'll be okay. Uh, she seems pretty stable enough, and she's actually quite level, according to the bubble level there. Um, right dead center level so I think I'm doing all right so once once it gets dark I'll go ahead and I'll pull her a line but for right now uh, can't pull her a line I pretty much have a flat horizon except up here to the north I've got some mountains right there some pretty mountains mountains over there and I've got believe it or not cell tower I think right over here so I got 5g so I'll be able to hook that up tether it to my wireless my little mango here and we should be okay and of course here's my little van I'll be sleeping in here tonight 
and I'll be here tomorrow as well. So I'll be sleeping here tomorrow night as well. I'm going to be here for two evenings. Okay. Well, I've cooked myself up breakfast. As you can see here, I've got eggs and sausage that I'm about ready to eat. I've also made myself a pretty decent cup of coffee. Ugh, thanks to my little kitchen and my van. So here's my little cup of coffee. Just so you can all see, because you're probably all curious. Or at least, I might be curious. Here is my kitchen. So there is my stove, which I gotta clean up dishes when I get done eating. And then here's like my kitchen and all that. So I've got two issues that presented themselves last night. One was the network connectivity and that the mango didn't work as I expected it to. I kept having drop offs. I kept having to reconnect to my sessions I brought a backup which was a wired switch and so I brought enough ethernet cables so everything was essentially wired last night and probably tonight will be wired as well. And I'm just going to have to go and find another solution to the mango. Mango didn't work as advertised. I had updated it <clears throat> to the latest firmware before I left and yeah it's just not stable. Not stable enough for me to use in, at a remote location. The other thing was that, uh, yeah, this isn't a Bortle 2 Sky. It's a Bortle 3 Sky. I was hoping it was between a Bortle 1 and a Bortle 2, and it's really a Bortle 3. And so I probably need to go, like I said, halfway. I, I, I need to go further west, closer to Quartzite, in order to escape the Phoenix Light Dome. So, yeah. But still, with Bortle 3, I was able to do four minute subs on my one shot color camera. So I'm really kind of anxious to see how those look out. They weren't blown out or anything. I probably could have done five minute subs if I wanted to, but I thought I was pushing it at four. So I will, um, I will put those together and I'll see what I end up with, but that will probably be uh, after I get home. The other issue that I came up with was power. I have a Blue Eddy 1000 watt hour battery, plus I had two other batteries that I was using as slave batteries. And apparently the smaller batteries kept pulling from the Blue Eddy to keep themselves charged. And in the process, it ended up um, basically sucking all the juice out of the Blue Eddy. And so I think I need to come up with probably a different battery solution, a different power solution. And I don't want to go to a generator or anything like that because that's just too loud, too noisy. I, I, I need to come up with another battery solution. So I may have to pick up another Blue Eddy-like battery to use separately just to, just to keep um, just to keep my rigs going and then keep my current Blue Eddy for the van and just leave it for just the van and not try to use it to um, supplement the, the slave batteries. The interesting thing is the slave batteries are good. They're at like 100% charged. So they sucked all the juice out of the Blue Eddy so they could charge themselves. So that's the other thing I gotta figure out is the power. So I, I need to figure out the connectivity piece and I need to figure out the power piece. still some questions I have and things I need to research and figure out and that's why you take trips like this is to try to figure things out so that you can see what the problems are and then try to come up with solutions. 
So until next time, clear skies and happy guiding.